Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Today is the very last day of E3, and we're going to be running around in the show floor, getting all kinds of great content for you. Uh, but before we do that, I want to dedicate this rundown to Jenny Bolton, that's Sid Bolton's wife. It's been an incredibly difficult week for her. Sid's funeral is tomorrow, so give a thought out to Sid Bolton and his family, and to Jenny. And if you would like to help Jenny Bolton out at all, there, we're going to put a link to the GoFundMe page that's set up to uh, give her a little bit of financial support through this incredibly difficult time. We love you, Sid Bolton, and we wish you all the best, Jenny Bolton. It's just awful news this week, but let's get started with The Rundown. So we're doing things a little bit different with the rundown while we're here at E3. I'm going to give you some thoughts on some of the games that I played. And I had a big chunk of hands-on time uh, with lots of different publishers. I started at Ubisoft, uh, and the first game that I played was The Division 2, and I really enjoyed the first Division. I thought it was a very cool concept. I know lots of people got uh, either fatigued or frustrated or pissed off with the first one, but UB kept improving and tweaking and refining, and The Division 2 is going to be a direct benefactor from all of that extra work. We had a really good time time taking down some pretty tough enemies. Now there wasn't any hands-on time with Beyond Good and Evil 2, but we did get an incredibly impressive demo. I suspect this is a next-gen video game though. It's absolutely massive. We're going to be starting in a city on a, on a planet and getting into cars and bikes and things that can fly just like the traffic in Fifth Element. Then we're going to be able to pull back and fly into space and get on big freighters and go to other planets. I cannot wait for Beyond Good and Evil 2 but I think we're gonna have to wait a long time. I was also very impressed by Assassin's Creed Odyssey, uh, which is coming too soon, but you can't refute that it's absolutely gorgeous. It's picking up on all the learnings from Origins. Obviously, a lot of kicks like uh, from 300. Ha! For Sparta, a lot of that kind of stuff. I also played some Skull and Bones, which was really fun, and I created a lot of havoc, but I feel like we just got a, a taste of the action gameplay and I wanted a little bit more diversity. Thankfully, they've got a lot more time to work on that, but it is beautiful. After that, I walked over to the Bethesda booth and I got some hands-on time with Rage 2, which blew my mind. It's kind of like uh, a Judge Dredd first-person shooter. Uh, it's picking up on, I think, the pretty tactile and, and fun g shooter gameplay of the first Rage, but refining it and making it super fast and fluid. You have these uh, nanotechnology enhanced superpowers, kind of like Jedi powers, force push and things like that. You can jump up in the air and smash and everybody goes flying. Very easy to pull off, very satisfying, very fun. I'm also excited to get the finished version of the Elder Scrolls Blades game. Played that on uh, iPhone 10s and it looked gorgeous. It ran really well. I tried it in portrait and landscape mode and it, you know, it, it handled that transition flawlessly. And it's compelling. I mean, you're picking up uh, bags of gold coins and, and gems and ki killing giant spiders and goblins and things. What a world we live in. At Square Enix, we got a very chaotic demo for Just Cause 4, which again feels like it's coming out a little bit too soon. Uh, but epic scale, uh, they're refining the whole grappling hook system now so that you can put all kinds of boosters and rockets and things like that. And so you can chain a bunch of little bombs and things onto uh, a, a traditional object like a uh, shipping crate or a, you know, a, an oil can or something and turn that into a weapon. That's coming out in December, so it's, it's going to be here very soon. And so it felt very polished, and I think it's going to be a blast. Now Capcom showed off some incredible games and it started with this very creepy walk through this maze, uh, sort of the police station from Resident Evil 2 where things got really spooky for me, man. It was crazy. You guys wouldn't believe what I did. I survived. <laughs> And then I got to play a little Resident Evil 2, and uh, they've changed the uh, the mechanics completely. It's a lot more in keeping with Resident Evil 4, uh, even a little bit of Resident Evil 7, even though it's all third person. So it feels more modern, it feels more beautiful, it feels like all of that pre-rendered background stuff that they did for the original game is now like fully realized in 3D, and you can look at it from every single angle. And those zombies are assholes, they just wouldn't stop coming at me. I felt like my camera was a little too sensitive, so I kept missing the headshot. I can't wait for Resident Evil 2, that was a great surprise. Capcom. Something that wasn't surprising was hands-on time with Mega Man 11. Uh, I knew that this was going to be fun, and I was right. This is a very slick, very tough game. I played it at normal mode, and I got to one of the bosses, and he was zapping all over the damn place. I think it's Fuse Man. I could not figure out the patterns, man, and he was just crucifying me. It was humiliating me in front of everybody in the Capcom booth. 
And the last two games that I spent some time with at E3 were probably two of the most intriguing and exceptionally exciting things that I saw at this whole conference, uh, starting with Cyberpunk 2077. And even though it was behind closed doors, they showed us a good hour of gameplay and they showed us some of the branching choices that we have and the paths that we can take. It does move quickly. It is, you know, a shooter with some of its mechanics, but the emphasis is on, uh, you know, complicated story that's very mature. Uh, we saw a lot of violence. We saw quite a bit of nudity and, you know, suggestive situations. It is unbelievable. And I know we're going to have to wait for a long time for this thing. I have some real questions about whether this is actually going to be playable on the, the you know, the, the launch PlayStation 4 or the launch Xbox One. Incredibly impressive demo. One of the most impressive demos I've ever seen at any one of the 24 E3s, and I will never forget it. Another demo that really knocked my socks off was Remedies Control, which 505 is publishing. It's really evocative and really moody and uh, cool, and it doesn't sort of over explain itself. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to the intrigue of the game and the mystery of the game. Control is one to watch out for. And those are some of my highlights from yesterday. I obviously looked at a bunch more games yesterday and I'm looking at tons today. And we are gonna have a full recap on all of our thoughts of E3 on Monday. We're taking tomorrow off with the rundown, but there will still be some new content filtering in over the weekend. So make sure you come back for that content and check out some of the other stuff that we've been posting. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, that little bell. And if you're so inclined, that sponsorship button too. Don't forget, play forever.